It is with great sadness we mourn the passing of Chadwick Boseman. He was 43, year old, 43 years old and he touched all of us. Went to Oxford, went to Howard. Amazing young man, died of colon cancer at age 43 years old. He touched us so much. This morning, I have a gastroenterologist from DMC Sinai Grace to explain exactly what's going on and how we need to take care of our health, take care of our colon health. My friends, we have Dr. Omar Asselby from the amazing Sinai Grace Hospital on the Northwest side of Detroit to discuss colon cancer with us. Dr. Asselby, as you know, we've lost an, an, an icon uh, right. Chadwick Bozeman at age 43 years old mm -hmm. and he died of colon cancer and he I guess lived with it for six years uh, all the while he was making great movies uh, 42 uh, right um, uh, get on up the James Brown biopic and of course the iconic uh, Black Panther um, Captain America Civil War uh, Avengers Endgame, all right, uh, the list goes on, uh, and uh, Avengers Endgame and Inven Avengers Infinity War, the list goes on. So doctor, he was 43, but they tell us right. not to have colon cancer screenings until we're 45. What gives here? Help us out here. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably has family history and other risk factors. Um, usually, it's more than 90% of cancer happen, colon cancer, happen above the age of 45 or 50. Uh, but now, uh, we're seeing more and more of cases that are happening earlier. Why that is, is probably it's, it's related to the genetics. Um, some people, due to family history risk, they should stop screening earlier, especially family, people who have family history of uh, colon cancer or if they have conditions like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's colitis, um, or they had polyps before or can other types of cancer before, then they should get their screening earlier. Um, I'm not so sure about this specific case. Um, we don't have information about his family history. Obviously, this is a more of a uh, privacy issue, but um, it, it, that's very possible um, explanation for why we're seeing colon cancer at 43 in this uh, uh, late uh, great actor. Does our diet have anything to do with it? Because I'm very, very uh, concerned with what people are eating. During this pandemic, there's a lot of extra money flowing around. And you would see the drive through fast, the drive through lanes at fast food restaurants out into the street. That can't be good for you. Right, I mean, there, there are studies, they're all observational studies, retrospective studies showing that people who consume more meat and red meat specifically, they are at high risk of various types of cancer, including colon cancer. Um, yeah, that's, it's probably gonna be a day of the day combination of two things, the genetics that we have and then the environment that we go through and uh, food, the, the food that we put inside us is, has a, a lot to do with it. What does Sinai Grace do to prevent this? What, what do you do? What do you offer there at that amazing hospital? So what we do, um, when it comes to colon cancer, um, believe it or not, it's a, a very preventable disease because um, usually the cancer doesn't pop up all of a sudden. It takes a while for this to start. And usually we talk about adenoma carcinoma sequence, the small polyp, small growth that is completely benign and innocent, takes a number of years until it becomes cancerous. So one of the most effective way to battle and, and to control even this problem is to screen for it and don't, we don't want to wait for symptoms to uh, show up on any patient because we may be waiting too long. So screening is the key, and, and uh, that is a very easy thing to be done. And I have to admit, we are not doing a good job with that. We, need, we, we are trying to get better with uh, screening. How do you screen for colon cancer? So there are different ways of screening. Uh, there are uh, invasive ways, and there are non-invasive ways. Uh, the, the most most acceptable way, I would say, maybe I'm a gastroenterologist, and this is why I, I look at it, as, because it's effective, is colonoscopy. Uh, the advantage of colonoscopy, it's a one-step test. 
that it shows the polyps and get rid of them at the same time. Other types of testing, stool-based testing uh, or uh, imaging testing will have, if there's any issues with the results of the test, then you're gonna have to undergo colonoscopy later on. But in general, there's um, either a procedure-based testing, colonoscopy, uh, or stool testing or imaging. Um, the stool testing is easier and it's only suitable for low or average risk people. People who have family history of colon cancer or had cancer before or had polyps before, they shouldn't be doing stool testing. They should just straight ahead go to, for colonoscopy. Is a colonoscopy safe, doctor? It's a pretty safe test. I mean, there's nothing perfect. You could be driving your car and think bad things can happen. But it, we're talking about 99.9 uh, safety for a test. Less than one in a thousand risk complication can happen. Um, and that typically, especially when there's a large polyp or a big issue with the colon, uh, then complications can happen. But uh, for the most part, it's a very safe procedure. It's an outpatient procedure. It uh, takes about, it does require investment for a day in terms of preparation for the procedure. And then the day of the procedure, patient's not gonna be able to work and they have to have someone to drive them back home. But um, this investment is just one day for 10 years if colonoscopy is normal. Uh, there are polyps on the other hand, then based on the type and size of polyps, we recommend when patients should get their colonoscopy later in the future. So it's basically you have the test and then you wait 10 years to have it again? If it's normal, yes. And if it's normal, clear prep, it's once every 10 years. That's what you, uh, you need. And it is quite um, uh, accurate test. Uh, as opposed to other testing, the stool-based testing that requires, requires patients to get it either once every year or every three years based on the type. There's a ColoGuard, uh, which is recently approved by FDA, uh, requires a three-year testing for average risk people. And there's the, what's called fit test or checking the blood in the stool that's uh, annually every year. Doctor, they recommend that you start these tests at age 45. Don't you think yes. with the passing of Chadwick Bozeman, maybe we should start earlier? Uh, we should start earlier for people who have high risk. Uh, I know it's, it's a sad case that we are talking about, but it's just still one case and we cannot generalize it for all everybody. Uh, we have to appeal, at, at look at patients separately. There are patients who would require even screening at 25 if they have they fill uh, criteria for something called HMPCC or Lynch syndrome, which is a group of cancers that can happen. And we start screening those at 25. For another very, but very rare condition called FAP, uh, those patients require screening at puberty. So it's 12 or 13. So it, it is not just, um, it depends on the case. So. Uh, Probably the primary care physician is the uh, best uh, step to start with, and they will assess that risk. Who should get colonoscopy earlier? If it's an average risk person who never had a colon, I mean, a colon cancer before, or in the family, no, no colon cancer before, um, and they don't have uh, conditions like colitis, uh, then this is uh, this 45 should be good. We're gonna still be missing like one and one percent or two percent, but. I remember at the end of the day, we're talking about a procedure or uh, some uh, investment that it has to, we have to, we talk about cost effectiveness when we measure this at the level of the society. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to be ignoring any symptoms. Even for younger symptoms who are in their 20s and they're having changing bowel habits, they're seeing some blood in the stool, uh, although we, we could sometimes attribute it to hemorrhoids, but we don't want to be rushing into that conclusion because you could have hemorrhoids as well as colon cancer at the same time in the same patient. So symptoms also should be worked up early and not be ignored. All right, doctor, uh, anything else you wanna add? Um, yes, I wanna encourage everybody to get their colonoscopy, to get their screening in general. If they don't wanna get a colonoscopy, they're, they're uh, for whatever reason, at least get that stool test. Um, it is, if it's negative, especially the cold guard, they say it's a good negative predictive value, meaning if it's negative, uh, there's probably no, nothing major there. Um, but if it's positive, it's gonna require colonoscopy. And colonoscopy, remember, it's just one day um, uh, investment for 10 year interval. And if that's good, then you get yourself screened and prevented from the, the second most common dangerous killing cancer in the United States. All right, one last question, does it affect African-American males more than any other population group or what? Excellent question. Yes, we are in Detroit. We have our 
a special population and in, indeed it is. Looks like colon cancer is targeting more and more in African American community. Um, and it is uh, uh, even the, the recommendations to go down from the, the screening age from 50 to 45 started for this specific group of um, a population for African Americans because it looks like cancer is hitting this population earlier. And, and yes, we, we, are, we have to be careful that we um, understand this and implement it. And uh, let me tell you again, we are back, not just I'm talking about one hospital, but the whole Detroit area and the whole nation. <clears throat> we are not uh, reaching our target of screening enough people. Really? Yep. We're not screening enough colon. We're not screening enough people. There's a lot, a lot of obstacles in the way. Um, sometimes access to medical care, sometimes medical insurance. Although, you know, the, the, uh, with the, um, uh, the ACA or Obamacare, uh, it, it, is, it is part of uh, um, maintenance care. It's part of essential care. It's, it's covered automatically. But yeah, despite that, we still don't see very high compliance with, uh, um, with uh, achieving enough targets of screening because this is the way to prevent the cancer. Okay. Doctor, I want to thank you for joining us again this morning. Sure. And, um, people should go to dmc.org uh, and see their primary care physician to get the process of screening started. Correct. All right, thank you very much, Doc. Thank you, have a good day, sir. All right, everybody get screened. Now, don't go out like the Black Panther did. Yeah. Really, it's horrible. It is. Yeah.